So hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is one that I cannot believe came to pass, okay? I'm not very often speechless, my earring is backwards, that's how shook I am. My earrings have rearranged themselves. I'm not someone that's very often speechless, okay? I got a lot to say. But you know, my love for Interview with the Vampire is pretty strong. It is pretty strong. That show is so dear to my heart, it means so much to me and I see myself... I see myself reflected in so many of the characters that when I started watching it, 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 it like it resonated with me in such a way that it, it just kind of shook me to my core. And it, 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 I was like, this is such an important piece of media. This isn't just a show, you know. Um, so then when season two started, I was like, we are doing reactions. We're going to be doing reactions. We're going to be covering the show on my channel. We are going to be talking and discussing. And I've really, really loved reading all your guys' comments underneath the reaction videos each week, discussing the show, discussing the books. Um, it's, it's just, it's been great. But if you've been with me for a while, then you know that I am a very passionate person and I love covering shows and stuff that I really love. And I also love getting to interview people. I love getting to hear firsthand from cast, crew, directors, actors, um, their experience with, with whatever, whatever it may be. All of that to say, today's video is an interview with a vampire, okay? It's an interview with the vampire Armand. <sighs> I got to chat with the absolutely spellbinding Asad Zaman. And let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you, it was an absolute pleasure. Such a charming and, and, and wonderfully soft and warm person. Put me at ease straight away, by the way, straight away. You guys know I'm an anxious little beaver. I shake at the corner like one of them little scabby chihuahuas when I get nervous. <laughs> Uh, but he was absolutely wonderful and I really enjoyed my chat with him. So a million, million thanks to Asad for sitting down and chatting and a million thanks to his team as well for helping make this happen, for arranging it and, and bringing it to, to pass, bringing it to happen. This was an incredibly special opportunity for me and it means, it means the world. And he told some beautiful stories. He had some fantastic insights and takes on Armand, on the show. And I just, I love getting to talk to people who are passionate about what they do and who who love who love like entirely and Asad is one of those people so yeah here is my chat with Asad. I'm fairly new to zoom I'm still in the prehistoric land of the dinosaurs with Skype. Where have you been? Oh. We've been doing this for like four years haven't we? We've been living in zooms. I've been living in Skype and the look I get off of people when I say Skype they're like you don't <laughs> zoom and I'm like I'll learn someday. Okay? Yeah. What what is Skype and uh, who uses it? You were raised on Skype too. Come I on. was, yeah, yeah, I, I was, I was, I was one of the best babies of Skype. Thank you so much for for sitting and for agreeing to chat and for being my first interview with a vampire. I do. Thank you, it. thank you. I'm really glad to be here. I'm really glad you reached out, and uh, I love your videos. And uh, and and yeah, it's it's a pleasure to chat to you. Oh, thank you so much. But that sounds like you have expectations. So um. Lord, High expectations, yeah. yeah you better get them a bit fucking low. <laughs> hey, I, I've been living with this for the last two years myself, so I know that feeling. I know the feeling. It's a uh, pressure. Yeah. No pressure at all. But, but before we get into interview and all that fun stuff, I thought we should go back a little bit to the start, because uh, I don't really know all that much about pre-interview for you. So I'd love to know where you got your love for the arts, where you decided you wanted to go into this as a career. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know much about myself beyond <laughs> before this. I feel like, I feel like Interview with the Vampire has kind of etched into the soul and, uh, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to remember what I used to be like before. Um, I grew up in Newcastle and, um, and I kind of, uh, got into acting by accident. I was, I was, I was just very shy at school and, um, my parents and my teachers wanted me to sort of find a way to express myself. And I, I don't think I thought it was much of a problem. I was kind of happy being in my own world. Um, but yeah, uh, I got kind of thrown to an after school drama class and it just kind of spiraled from there. Just this love of performing, love of storytelling and kind of it it took time for me to sort of also realize that I had a voice and I could kind of make my voice heard if I wanted to and express ideas and they um they might be worth something. So 
yeah yeah it was a it was like a long discovery from then mm. <clears throat> this is something similar happened to me in school as well I was very shy I was the kind of mm. kid the teachers didn't even know the name they didn't know my name mm. uh, and they tried that with me too surprisingly like after school drama club and stuff like that and um didn't work out for me I ended up being cast in a play and then I I, I bolted I ran away I was like what no. <laughs> what um, was the play do you remember Chicago in Chicago oh, and I love Chicago yeah loved it and I was like no I wait did you did you bolt mid-performance or did you like oh no way beforehand in rehearsals way beforehand right. I was handed um oh god I don't remember what song it was for but I was handed like the lyrics to something and I was like oh this is my part and the, my teacher was like yeah and I was like no 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 okay. <laughs> um so I'm glad that that helped and worked for you and kind of pushed like you said, help you push you to find your yeah voice. yeah. It's I think it's it's uh, delicate, isn't it? it? It's not for everyone. I think it would have, yeah. Uh, I think I think my parents and my teachers were kind of hitting and hoping because I just wasn't I just wasn't communicating. It was just something that I just didn't know how to do. I remember this is quite embarrassing, but I remember I used to sit next to um I used to sit next to this girl for, at year seven. Um, up all the way up until year 11 and it, in every class we were always sitting in like we were always put into sort of the same sort of seating sections or whatever um anyway for four years I didn't say a word to her I could not ever talk to her um and I, and I couldn't even like look at her but she would sort of talk to me she'd be like Asad oh, do you need this or do you oh. need that and and I would answer by nodding my head or shaking my head um it was so like surreal thinking back to you now and she actually became a really good friend later on when when I kind of came out of my shell mm. but um but yeah yeah shyness is it's a it's a strange thing and like kids I think about it a lot like how do you know why yeah where where we get our voice and confidence from I think some some people find it very quickly and some people just take time and you kind of have to have to nurture it um yeah <clears throat> It's always the quiet ones, though, that end up going off to do the most unexpected things. Like I wonder, dangerous. How many, I wonder how many of your classmates either go onto Twitter or like Facebook or something and it's the pro promo poster for season two and they're like, what the fuck is that the quiet guy? Oh, they, they would have no idea it was me. They would, they would, I, I, I was like you. I, th I think most people just didn't know who I was, just didn't oh. know my name. Didn't, I was sort of like a ghost in the background. <laughs> just um, yeah <laughs> i know the feeling man um yeah. but regarding interview oh my god first of all i entered this mm. my mom loved the universe read the books saw the movie and she said to me you know it's being made into a show and i was like yeah okay cool like i might watch it and she was like she watched it before me and i think she watched the first episode and was on my ass like you ha you have to watch this seriously it's your thing you gotta watch this and i was like yeah i will she wore me down eventually and I watched it and was just hooked from episode one. I've gone back and read the books. I've watched the film. I have watched season one an embarrassing amount of times. <laughs> uh, but for you, where did you first hear about the show? What was the audition process like the beginning? Well, I was I was doing a play in London and I got an audition through my agent for um for Rashid and I was doing the tapes I was doing like a self tape for it in between shows so I was like frantically kind of like learning these lines but you know Rashid's scenes were fairly, fairly small and kind of contained so I got I think I've got that first audition kind of done and out of the way and I didn't even like really think about it too much I was like okay I know what this part is he's the he's the um he's the assistant techie guy he's he's yeah I've I've done many auditions like this before and I kind of just threw it away and sent it off and didn't think about it again and then got a recall and then eventually got to the third audition where I got I think I got like a new scene that I didn't understand the context of I was like what's happening here and um and I was like I don't know what to do with this like what is this part and that's when Rollin the showrunner asked to have a a, a zoom chat with me um, and he was like, I just want to give you a few sort of pointers to think about before we go into the next stage. And um, and I was like, so confused and sat in this Zoom. And that's when he told me, oh, 
so you're playing um you're you're going for the part of armand but we are he's in disguise at, the, at this point in the story and blah 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 all of that stuff and i um i was like freaking out and i was aware of the film i had seen it i'd, I'd seen the film when i was like i don't know six five or six or something like that yeah you do yeah. watch that at five or six i've got i've got older cousins who would always watch mm -hmm. like we'd go to their house and they'd put on like classic horror movies and thrillers and like stuff that we definitely should not be watching and like me and my sisters are doe-eyed and just sit on the floor and just stare and um and so I remember, I remember the movie. I really only remember um, uh, Claudia Kirsten Dunst playing Claudia, um, but I didn't. Yeah, or the rest of it was kind of a bit of a blur. So, um, so I going back to that audition, I was like freaking out, and then um, and that's when I did my like kind of rapid research into it, um, and then did like five more auditions and got the part and then went on this mad journey um and what was nice is coming out of it in season one i was also watching like you like a like an audience member because i knew first of all like amc were like we are not gonna put you in any interviews you cannot talk about it <laughs> you cannot like <laughs> you know you've got to keep it quiet people yeah. are i mean people were already like talking before he'd come out because um my casting had been announced on the list and I think I was one of the only kind of well one of the few parts that didn't have any book ties um as a character so everyone was like who the fuck is Rashid and why has he been announced so I think people were already like starting to sort of whisper so yeah. they were kind of yeah very strict with keeping me on the down low so I was able to just come back to normal life at home and and watch the show as a as a viewer and I fell in love with it. Like I fell in love with it so hard, more than I thought I would. I read all the scripts once I got the part and then, you know, being in New Orleans and meeting everyone and seeing how it was being made, I was like, this is, I knew that it was gonna be good, but how, um, especially that first episode, how like, how perfectly it was gonna capture this sort of lightning in a bottle. I, I don't think, I don't think I was ready for and kind of, had me from then on mm, yeah it was the same for me it's mm. exactly like I said lightning in the bottle from the I loved the first episode but once we got to the church scene there at the end once Louis enters the confessional from there I was just I mm. was, I'd never seen anything like this yeah yeah um, I, I think for I, I said this I said this the other day um that that scene that particular bit his church monologue is my favorite um moment I think in all of season, in all of season one, yeah, um, I yeah, I think it's just it's so beautiful and so vulnerable, and so it's actually kind of like a microcosm of everything the show kind of is about and is is expressing is how how this um, <clears throat> how how our sort of inner demons and thoughts and expectations and religious um, stiflings or um, personal stiflings can need need to be expressed or how they can burst out and yeah yeah he's brilliant yeah beautifully put man I completely agree uh but skipping on to season two particularly episode five now let's talk about season one I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah I'm you want to go back to the one. no interview stage you're like yeah. no I'm good actually <laughs> yeah um season two I was a bit cautious going forward into two because I was like season one I loved it so much like what if season two doesn't live up like what I don't know what I'll do because I am so invested in the show and it yeah. was the exact exact fucking opposite it has soared past anything that I had hoped um but a standout is episode five right I mean I had so much emotional whiplash watching this episode um and it was a huge one huge one for our mind mm. but but there's small little scenes throughout that they're really heavy right so yeah I mean, most of the scenes with young Daniel <laughs> in this episode in particular, Armand was just showing all of his little unhinged, jealous side bits when he was like, uh, what was it? Am I boring? Louis thinks I'm boring. <laughs> um, but but then towards the end, <coughs> in super emotionally charged scene where Armand is offering an end, I guess, to young Daniel. 
And yeah. for you, how how do you navigate emotional scenes like that with a scene partner? Um, you know what? That episode is such a blur, such a blur, because that's the first thing we shot. That the 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 argument with Louis. That was my first day on set. Um, Jacob and Luke had been doing the sort of pre Armand entering the room that for a few days before. Um, so they had kind of built, like, warmed up, built up a, a bit of a kind of energy and like atmosphere in the room that I was coming into, which was really welcoming and and really safe. Um, but I, I don't know it was like you you uh, you preps you prep as much as you can as an actor, I think, and I um. I did as much as I could. I kind of lived and breathed this. And like you, I was terrified about going in and this season coming out as just not reaching the level um, of season one. And I don't know, I think I took, I, I if if that had happened, I would take, I, I can't help it, but I would take personal responsibility for it because I I would be one of those new bits of elements that, possibly might not work and and I was like okay I've got it I've got it I've got to um accept that and just fucking throw it away and just I need to hit it I need to just go in and like do do what I can um so yeah there was a, like there was a lot of pressure and there was a lot of I think also like self-inflicted pressure that I was putting on myself um but you know once we were there and once like it started rolling it kind of it kind of had a life of its own and those the argument we like it just also i mean we're really blessed with amazing writing and like that's not and that's no joke and like it's i'm not exaggerating these those words are so easy to flow out of your mouth even if some of them feel quite alien to you in the way you say it but they're they're yeah we just you can sort of flow with it and dance with it and we started having a laugh and I think very quickly um Craig the director um Craig Zisk brilliant 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 man he I think I don't know if they decided on the day or they kind of knew that this we're not going to be able to contain these two actors in this moment and any any kind of um any uh intention of maybe doing a, a still close or uh, um, uh, like sort of flowing shot or whatever has to go out the window because this is an explosion. And so we weren't restricted. And um, and that was one of the things I was worried about because go like doing more, I'd, I'd mainly done theatre. And so doing more screen, I knew that if I don't hit, the, my, hit my mark and stuff like that, those are alien things to me. But I was able to, be back on stage on that in that scene because we had um two cameramen with the cameras on their shoulders and we just they shot both ends so one person was shooting louis one person was shooting me and we were just doing it just rolling it and they were they were just sort of following us without without giving too much um direction so we were allowed to just really have an outburst and really have a fucking fight and um, do the things, the stupid things you would do to, to <laughs> get the other person's attention, and uh, and it's scrappy and it's messy. And I mean, I don't know how Roland was able to edit it into a into a cohesive kind of uh, scene because also we're rolling on top of each other as well, and he was encouraging that, like just you're, you're shouting on top of each other. So um, how they were able to clean it up because we I don't think we did any ADR for um, for that scene. Really. Yeah, that's that scene is raw as you see it. It's like that's the that's the argument. Um, yeah, it was a it it was it was a it was a like a crash course into acting and and into that show. But um, I'm glad I did it. I'm glad that that was the way we started. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, that scene was so like you said, it was messy. It was the fight between um, Armand and Louis. It was. It's, it was kind of like watching your parents fight in a way where it's like the things that are being said are so mean mm. and hurtful and it's like, like, stop, you know what I mean? I mean, 
I, I, it was comically hurtful though. The mo the bit where Amon sits down and he's like, "Oh, my life is so hard," and then from that into like, you know, what was it? My sister, my daughter, and then stat, stat, stat. It was yeah, yeah. Really bitchy. We we both we both improved a lot during that, and um, <laughs> and not a lot. I'm glad not all of it is used. A lot of it is not used because we. Well, I did, I went into a lot of like sort of modernisms and my things like and I, and I think I went I I do slip my accent does slip there and you can uh, and I'll fully admit it because it's my first day and I'm like kind of flipping between who Armand is here where is he now like I've been prepping for Paris Armand but we're going straight into San Francisco what the fuck is he doing here um, so and and then yeah I think when I'm sat on that sofa I was doing a lot of yeah I, I think I was just doing a lot of mocking and and um, it was fun as well. Like, yeah, that's that's the thing. It, it's it's so intense and it's it's heartbreaking to see. But we had a lot of fun. I I yeah, it was. It's fun doing things like that where you um, where you trust each other implicitly and kind of know that you can you can throw things around and like let it let it land and if it, and and know that someone's there to sort of anchor it and guide you when when you go too too far like if you yeah if you go too far this way too far that way um yeah yeah um you could tell that you guys were like two firecrackers like riffing off each other but it yeah. was actually it was during that scene i think that we saw or at least i saw um, <clears throat> aside to armand that i don't know it, it softened me up a little bit to him uh, it's where he goes, she didn't love you, not like he did and not like I do, or like not, not like I have mm, uh, in mm. regards to Claudia and the stat. And it's like, I got him because all along I was like, okay, he's not being truthful. I, I don't really trust him. I don't know, but like he's sweet in certain scenes and other scenes I kind of want to hit him over the head with something. But in that moment, I was like, I get it. Like this love that he has for Louis and he feels like he's always vying for his attention or that he won't live up to like the ghosts of Louis's past. Yeah. But that vulnerability that jumped out was just so gorgeous. And I wonder for you, what do you think it is about Louis that draws Armand to him so, so much, so strongly? Well, first of all, thank you. I, I really appreciate that. And actually, I think for me, that that moment, that scene is probably also the closest um, you'll see, you, the closest you'll see me as Armand, like as in Armand to me, I think. Mm. Does that make any sense? Like... Oh, um yeah. like i i really relate to that and his sort of vulnerability in that moment and also because it was the first scene i think there was a lot of me <clears throat> excuse me there was a lot of me going into into that as well um i think louis the thing like the 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 shining like light that louis brings is um his sort of fascination of about humanity and sort of life that Armand has lost in in a way, or has been searching for for a long time. Um, when they meet in Paris, that's that's what that's what draws Armand to him. I think um, when you strip away all of it, it's like he's Armand has been going stale for a long time and has gone grown tired of sort of. pretending i think and uh, and the tragic thing about him is that he he goes through cycles of doing this it, it's not this isn't the first time he's and uh, he's sort of um thrown all of himself into someone in the hopes that that someone will save him from this um the darkness that's in him and I think all all the characters in this show have that to an extent, um, and ex like battle with degrees of that. Um, and Armand's is like particularly, uh, just particularly sort of devastating because um, you really want to you really want to help him, but then he does not help himself, so it just makes you. Like love and loathe him, and I know people like that in my life where you're just like, ah, oh, like I really want to love you, mm. but you're making it so difficult because you, and you're not seeing the 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 patterns in your behavior. So, um, yeah, and plus Louis hot, so 
<laughs> well, I wasn't going to say it, right? I was trying to keep it professional. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think I think you did hit hit a point there about that it is a case of there's there's a, there's a and it's it's very much a case with all of the characters in the franchise that there is there is such a streak of realism to all of them where it's like mm. you you can picture someone in your life that is a Louis that is a Lestat that is an Armand, um, and it just fleshes them out and makes them more than just characters on a screen. I wanted to just touch on briefly the use of language because uh, we, we've heard Metra and Arun, and I know I butchered the pronunciation of them, I apologise, but we've heard them come up. I, I think you've got Arun, Arun is, you got Arun right, Metra, your Metra has, your Met is a hard one. That French R has always, like, it pisses me off so much, it's so I hard to French do. I French in school and I could never, Did you? yeah, I could never, I mean, like, I, I passed it, I think I got a B in mm. my, my leaving search, but I could never get the pronunciation right. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, the the use of those those uh, titles for each other, it's so interesting, especially within the relationship, because when they're brought up or when they're used, it's like a, a shift in power. It's like the dynamics are changing as you're looking at the screen. Mm. Um, and I just wanted to get some of your takes on that. What do you think, Armand? Do you think he realizes that as it's happening, as it's being said to him? I think, um, I, again, it's like, it's just sort of genius sort of... Um, theme pinpoints from from the writing and how how they've sort of um married the characters needs and wants and their and their growth or what's the opposite of growth um during the season and like arun met is is a is like a really sort of um specific one that that they point out yeah it's he it's it's a title that he's given himself or has been given to him, but he's never, he's never felt it. He's never, I don't think he's ever, ever um, really wanted it or, um, or get it, or I don't think it gives him happiness. He, he would much rather um, um, be referred to, like he, he would much rather have a maître in Louis. <laughs> and I think that goes back to his other, previous sort of um partners that he's had in his life or people people that he's had in his life but here he's it's it's that's his cloak that's his kind of mask and um and i think when louis when is it that louis first episode four end of episode four he um calls him arun for the first time mm. and it's like for armand i think that's um in that moment, that's Louis seeing Armand for the child that he is, for the sort of innocent, innocent that he is, and that's what makes Armand melt. And I think that's that in the park bench scene, that's kind of like a sigh of relief that he that he doesn't have to do this alone because he's been doing this alone for so long, uh, maintaining power, maintaining structure, maintaining the coven, and now Louis kind of said um with that phrase um i can share that burden with you uh even better i can take it from you i can i can hold it and and i think and also there there is like there are the um i think sexual dynamics in that as well um and that's <laughs> yeah the the sort of submissive um elements to it so yeah it's protection and um and i feel that he yeah he he kind of sees louis as his protector um but it's it's also difficult because he he doesn't he wants to give that control but he he wants to also control louis yeah. so it's like he can't have both man <laughs> he can't have both and yeah. that's his downfall be beautifully put. Um, so last question for you. Uh, we we'll touch a little bit on episode six for the last one, um, the most recent one that aired. You had the reveal that, yeah, Louis asked Armand to do a little bit of mind fuckery and alter some of the, the memories of the happenings. Um, and when we see, we see this raw side to Armand, we see him falter, which we haven't really seen all that much up to this point, especially mm. when he's talking to Daniel. There's, there's almost a shake to him 
Um, and it, it brings a whole new meaning to the I Preserve Your Happiness sentence. But man, that episode was emotional whiplash in regards to Armand. All right. And then at the end, the happenings at the end that's leading, if it's leading to what I think it's leading to, if we're following the books, then oh my God, it's going to be heartbreaking. But there's so many different sides to Armand. There's so many different aspects to him. I wonder for you, what was the most enriching part so far? Uh, or the most enriching thing that you found through playing him? Uh, in the episode or in the whole thing? In the whole thing so far, because it's just that one episode I was back and forth thing so hard on his character. I was like, yeah, okay, leave him yeah. alone. Like, he did it out of love. It's all right. But then it ends with uh, Armand at the door and Louis Claudia. And yeah. um, if it goes where, it's where, where I think it's going to go, I'm going to be punching some TV screens. Um, <laughs> but he is that kind of character. That there's so many different sides to him. So for you, what's been the most... You, you know what? I, I never thought I'm I'm like I'm 34 years old and I never thought by this time I would have uh, I would be blessed with with a part like this, with an exploration of life like this, with mm -hmm. with an exploration of uh, of storytelling like this. And it's it's like everything, all the best parts of what we do are kind of put into this nugget of a of a show, of a story. And um, so I, if I'd struggle finding my favorite part of playing Armand because all of it has just been such a such a fantastic kind of um lesson for me and um an experience I think one of the like moments that stand out to me is the um the scene in the Louvre where uh, I'm talking about um where we look at the painting and we hear Armand's story in episode four that <coughs> I got that script before we sh started shooting and I read I remember reading that scene and going oh shit like that that scene and episode all of episode five were the my two oh shit moments <laughs> um as an actor going how the fuck am I gonna do that um and we we didn't shoot that scene until we got to Paris we shot it in Paris and that was right at the end of filming, which is around, I think, October last year. Mm -hmm. So that is one of that is one of the last scenes I shot, and um, and it was kind of like a beautiful bookend, starting with, you know, episode five and that all of that with Louis and Daniel, and then ending with his kind of story there, that kind of quiet moment, and I, I'd gone. I'd sort of gone through this nine month journey with um with filming in Prague and then the two month but in in that we had the two month kind of hiatus because of the strikes. So um it was like I don't know, when we got to that scene, it suddenly flowed out so easily. I it, I and I have yeah, I I I really kind of I felt it without any kind of effort and um and it was funny because I was really nervous that I wasn't going to be able to make it truthful but uh all of all of that sort of all of the journey had was in me yeah that was a, that was a special moment I think Boy. yeah that was a beautiful scene heartbreaking heartbreaking as a viewer like but beautiful mm. scene um, but yeah, I, I've kept you long enough. Thank you so much for your time as well. Like it's been lovely to chat to you about it as well. <laughs> so. Not at all. Thank you so much for coming and sitting and listening to me fucking ramble on for over half an hour. Oh my god. Um, Not at all. <laughs> thank you so much for the love and the energy put into the show. It means an awful lot to an awful lot of people, myself included. So I appreciate you, man, so much. Appreciate you too. Thank you. Thank no you. problem at all. And that is it for my chat with Asad. What a wonderful, wonderful person. I'm just I'm just so blown away that he took the time to sit and talk and um, open up and share some stories. So yeah, again, a million thanks to Asad and his team for helping to make this happen and for trusting me to um, provide a space where he could sit and tell some stories and open up. And yeah, it was absolutely incredibly, wonderfully, spectacularly, 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 Mm, can you tell that speaking is my job? <laughs> Listen, I've had a day of holding it together. I have been huh, all day long. I'm allowed to have a little bit of a, a moment now. <laughs> I feel like all the stress is just like released from my body. 
I should start recording the intros and outros before I do the interviews because it would be more professional. Because once the interview is done, I feel like my body goes, well, good girl, you can relax. And then my brain just goes like, do, 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 do. So, but yeah, thank you guys for so watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you guys for all of the love on the interview with the vampire reactions. Again, for your insights and your takes. And I just, I love going through the comment section and reading what people are saying. It's just splendid. Everybody has so many different takes that I'm like, I didn't even think about that. Oh my God. And that is a great point over there. <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys for the love and the support and for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are and I will talk to you all soon. So, um, <laughs> I like I have like subtle interview merch in the background, very, very, very subtle that you like. Well, you know, it's not that subtle. It's glow in the fucking dark. It's 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 an LED light that I had custom made, but it's kind of subtle. It blends. You know, I have my interview mug there and I have an interview poster there. You get the point. But I also <laughs> I also ordered another poster and it came literally this morning and I was like, I cannot put this up in the background because it's going to seem really weird. So like I had this poster arrive in the door this morning and I was like, I don't think I can put that up because I'm a fangirl and a lover of stuff and things. Yeah, clearly you get the background and look at my body. It's all stuff that I love. But I was like, it might be a bit off putting if someone was to get on for, for an interview and they're just staring at their face in the background. So, um, I don't know what the point of that story was. I just thought I'd share with you. That came out as American. I've been watching too many fucking American shows lately. I just thought I'd share that with you. <laughs>